What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to Wrapped. My name's Ryan Key. That's Colton Hinderleiter, and today we've got a special guest in the building today. His name's Adam Stansel. He's going to be providing some extra input. He's our CHH expert. Adam, you anything to tell the people? Yo, what up, peeps? Uh, stoked to be here. Uh, Ryan hit you guys with an Incooch classic. I don't know if you guys know who that is. If you don't, look him up. Sounds just like that intro he just hit y'all with. All but right. yeah, I'm stoked to be here. Yes, yeah, so re- remind us, CHH once again stands for uh, Christian Hip Hop. Yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed the ride so far. Welcome to the second half of the Top 100 Countdown. I will be starting this one off with an album by Andy Minio. It's called Work in Progress. Why is it so low? That's so first question. <laughs> this is so low. Why? Because I didn't like most of this. What? If I'm being completely oh, yeah. honest. Hot takes. Yeah, what? I, we're, here for, we're here for hot takes. Why didn't today. you like it? I didn't. I just wasn't. Okay. Fe- like there was some. There were some things in here that I like. Anything but country. I really enjoyed because I thought that song was funny. It's really interesting. Because too. I've known like I've been known to say, oh, I enjoy everything but country. And that's just, like, some super negative yeah. mental state that I've been in. But, like, there's some things on the, I didn't like how he put I Ain't Done, another version of I Ain't Done on here. Because I thought I Ain't Done was, like... But did you listen to the podcast? I did listen to the podcast. This is my opinion. Let me express but myself. I, I, I do yeah, think, I do think, I do right think you're right, though. Like, the, my least favorite part of the whole album are the last two songs because they're songs that already came out and they're yeah. just reworked versions. So yeah. you're not completely off. I'm just. No. I was just curious if you listen to the podcast. Yeah, and I I listened to all the podcast episodes like as he released the songs, yeah. and I I love the concept of it. How he was like these are songs that he hadn't released yet. Yeah. Be, for some reason or another, and this was the way to get them out there. Um, however, I just feel like there was a lot that missed for me. Just maybe it went over my head, as things tend to do. Um, but like I when this first started coming out, I was like, all right, cool, this is this is all right. Like I liked keeping it moving and like the title track and everything. Um, but there's just like I liked I don't need you. I like the switch up and I don't need you as well. Um, but mm-hmm. there's just some, there's just some things that like I guess they just went over my head that I didn't under necessarily understand. Um, but that's that's my thoughts. Uh, if you guys think I'm wrong, I think that's fair. No. There's a there's been a couple albums that's come out this year that's like that same format of like, oh, these are songs that I meant to release or I released on like SoundCloud only or whatever. Like Drake's <clears throat> Care Package being one of them. Except yeah. in comparison, to this album Drake's Care Package is not good. Yeah. Also, Drake's Care Package was unnecessary. <laughs> exactly. So that's another thing too. Is a question of whether or not these albums are necessary, and many times they're not. Um, I do think this album was necessary. Yeah. Um, I just didn't enjoy like it, it, and as that's much fair. As I'd, it's definitely yeah. a niche. Yeah. So, so I feel you. Right. So, work in progress to me is really interesting. Okay, hang on. I'm, I'm a preface this. I did not like it as much as I like some other indie projects out there, only because it's not a cohesive project. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, like there yeah. aren't. It doesn't lead into one another. The, yeah. the 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 motifs are not the same. The ideas are not the same. It's got like I think I was counting a second ago and like t- like ten different producers on it. Like it's just, there's just a lot of different hits on it. Yeah. But yeah. what's so interesting about that is that it really shows the growth of Andy as an artist mm-hmm. because because it spans eras. Yeah. Yeah, because like Andy's gone through a lot of change over the years, um, both in his personal life and in his music. Yeah, and it always like manifests itself in different ways. And so like when you look at the track list, um, there's several things that come from like current era Andy, and there's a lot of stuff that comes from like four years ago Andy, which yeah. is a totally different Andy. This is true. Yeah. So like anything but country comes from like uncomfortable era, which if you know anything about Andy, like uncomfortable is an album that he doesn't talk a lot about. Like, he doesn't promote it. He doesn't remember it, really. And, like, when he talks about albums, he just kind of skips over it, which to me is weird because I really liked Uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you flip around and you go to things like um, Honest to God and I Ain't Done and Keeping It Moving and OTOD, which are all very, like, current Andy songs yeah. because they were recorded in the last, like, two years yeah. or a year even. Um, and another commonality between those things is he started work- working with a guy named Beam, um, Ryan, Beam you, slaps. You, okay, you gotta know. Yeah. You guys know who Beam slaps. is. Okay, I know who Beam is. so Tashane, oh, that's his real name. But but Beam, um, 
crazy drum beats, like insanity. Wild. Yeah. And so Andy talks a lot about how like working with Beam has kind of brought him to this new creative space, and you can really see that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But like. I don't know, because I'm with you, Ryan. Like, I, I did not enjoy it as much as I respect it. Yeah, I feel but, like mm, if it had been, if it, I feel like as it came out with the podcast, I feel like if this had come out as, like, a collection of singles that was, like, packaged as, like, oh, this is a new playlist, I feel like that would have been cooler yeah. to me, because I love the concept of doing something with and explaining it, mm-hmm. how, like, every song had Thank a you. podcast episode yeah. dedicated to it. So um, cool. I just, like, I really, I guess I really love the sword and um, Arrow, where oh, like, it was so just the arrow, yeah, start to the finish. Arrow is it was a journey. Yeah, um, Arrow was my number two last year. Yeah. Oh, for real? Yeah. Arrow was Jeez. Arrow was Jeez. so Jeez. high up. Yeah. But y'all, like, don't worry. Like, you could tell we coming back to this one. So like, we we're gonna table that for now. All right. But we're coming back, and we're gonna we can talk more about it later. Uh, for sure, for sure. All right. So now my top fifty, actually, my, just my fifty is gonna be an album called Garage Band B. And then the and symbol. (laughs) Clever typography. That's fire. (laughs) It's called Garage Band by Jesse Rutherford. And Jesse Rutherford is the lead singer of The Neighborhood. Yo. This is his, like, so this, like, thing is his second solo album. I found it because he's friends with Vic Mensa, who we mentioned earlier. And Vic Mensa posted about it on his Instagram. And I was like, what's this? And it's literally called Garage Band because he made the entire thing on his phone in Garage Band. Talent. So interesting, and for and because of that, it probably earned me brownie points in that respect because like the beats slap for being made on a phone. He also brought in Take a Day Trip and other producers, Yo. and was just like, "Make me beats on your phone, and I will put them on my phone, <laughs> and I'll put them on my album." I need to listen. To super it, cool. It's cause... super short. It's kind of like an EP albumish yeah. kind of thing. Um, it's good. There's some there's some slaps. It goes hardcore i also want to point out that there's a three second song just called the n-word and do you know how it goes he just says no and then it ends that may that makes me so nervous it's it just that's that all it just that it's gives all, me so it's, much anxiety that's all it is it's just that it's oh just like, my god that gave me so much anxiety and, it, <laughs> and it's more like a commentary it's interesting i don't know uh-huh. i just have to note that because it's it was a standout thing where i was just like uh-huh um, but it's also just it's like a cool concept that it was executed super well, solid tracks. Um, definitely something you can just bump in your ride, especially if you live like in LA or something, it's mm-hmm. a very LA sounding album. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Really interesting stuff too from Jesse Rutherford. He's on tour with the neighborhood right now. Um, and they're doing some shows across the U S so really be curious to see if he does some more solo work in the future. Cause mm-hmm. I think he, he should. All right. Well, my number 49 is by this guy that I'm going to butcher his name, and I apologize, but uh, Gustafel Stein, Gustafel Stein, Gustafelin, Galfus, that dude that's really good at making music. Someone on the radio. Um, So his album's called Hyperion, um, and I really like this album. This is another album that I feel like was very well produced. Um, very, very well, like thought out. Like there is a lot of little things in these songs that are like very ear catching, and ear catching in a way that's like, oh, I've heard this before, but this is different. It's like, oh, I've like maybe I've never heard these kind of sounds like meshed together. Um, and I feel like this is an album that I would appreciate more live than just oh, sitting down to listen to. Yeah, depending on how he approaches his live show and that live production. Um. I feel like this song, this album features The Weeknd and Pharrell and Haim and The Hacker and Electric Youth. Yeah, the uh, Lost in the Fire single yeah. is straight fire. That's what we're going with? That, that's that's the one you're going with? Yeah. All right, solid. I'm <laughs> um, which has The Weeknd on it, which is why it's fire. Yeah, I mean, he brought up the best in The Weeknd. Um, he brought up the best in Pharrell. He and... also proved that he brought the best in The Weeknd on... My Dear Melancholy, which yeah. he was featured uh, on, but Very he was heavily. the producer for it. Um, so this project, I feel like, is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. I wish I had gotten to catch him in Atlanta at the mm-hmm. Roxy um, when he came through there, because I feel like that would have kind of changed my perspective on the album a yeah. little bit. Um, but if you just need a highlight, other than the single with The Weeknd, definitely check out the song with Pharrell. And then there's a song that happens right after the – it's track number eight. It's called Vortex. Um, please listen to it and let me know what you think because it's of it's probably a, it's a very divisive song, in a way that 
it doesn't always make sense if that makes if that makes any sense um it's very like sonically confusing <laughs> and i feel like that's the best way to describe this album is sonically confusing but <laughs> you're it's like i don't know why but i kind of like but you this. kind of like the confusion yeah. the chaos of yeah it. it's like a very very like this is just absolute chaos but Sonic i love it disequilibrium i love it big yeah. words and stuff Big Look at you, we spent bars. Gang, gang, gang. Teacher and teaching, teaching. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I really like this album. I I am more than confused on why. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I like it, but it's like, good. It, but you know yeah. what? That is honestly, this album had me speechless. Like I finished yeah. listening to it, and I looked at my boss, and I just went, "What?" And he goes, "Ryan, shut up, sit down." Do do your work, and I was like, I need a moment, and I took a lap around the uh, facility where we work at. But this album's really cool. Listen to it, please. It it it's really really nice. My number forty nine is called Chronologic. It's by Caravan Palace. So Caravan Palace is Imagine Daft Punk in twenty nineteen, but big band, because they are a oh. Parisian, like house electronic. Lo-fi band. They do yeah. have like a some lyrics to them because they have like a lead singer of sorts, but she also plays like tambourine and other instruments. Uh-huh. Um, I just found this as through my community of like lo-fi instrumental stuff mm-hmm. that I love, and it popped up. I thought the artwork was cool. They also have a very like robot aesthetic. Like their last album was titled like the symbols on your keyboard that make up a robot, which is yeah. also very Daft Punk. Yeah. Um, but it's good. I put it on my study playlist. Like the second half of this album really really moves it kind of sounds like techno moulin rouge like it's cool and like a, a couple of my co-workers were like yo you listen to caravan palace like yeah i do now and like we're all into it we play it like whenever we're working because it just works out as really good work productivity music oh, um nice. but it's also a super solid album the production was five out of five for me uh which is why i put it high it's just the overall technical aspects of it were mm-hmm. a plus so yeah Good stuff, Caravan Palace. Yeah, Listen ch- to them. Check them out. It's on my list now. Yeah. All right, so my number 48 is a return on my list to Logic, and it is the Supermarket soundtrack. Oh, you listened to it? I did listen to it. I know it. you listened to it. Um, I didn't read the book, but I definitely listened to the it. book's good, um, but you don't have to read the book to understand the album. So that is so your, your opinion of it is very valid because you don't need to read the book to get it. So... You're good. Okay, I thought you had to just call me stupid because no, 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 no. I'm like, kidding. Nice. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Man, we really here for hot takes. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this album, I thought I I liked it. Um, I thought it so was so good. It, I thought I did not know what to expect. Yeah, same. Um, I remember when it came out and I was on Twitter. I was like, you know what, this is gonna be fun, and people were like, what? And some I remember somebody just tweeted Logic Supermarket Supermarket LOL, and I was like guess i have to listen to it. and yeah. i sat down and like didn't do anything else while i was listening to this and felt very very like comfortable in this project and that's mm. not something that i necessarily expected yeah um i because usually i'm not a huge fan of rappers not rapping or just going a complete 180 and saying let me make a blink 182 album right quick. yeah and i'm okay with this I, yeah. like, I liked it. I feel like it's definitely not a market that I see him staying in or do I, that not a no, market that I think no. he should stay in. No, it's just it was a concept. Um, it's but purely for in one the thing. concept, and I'm sure after I read the album, it will also come out much, much smoother. Yeah. Um, read the album. Read I, the book. I got the copy over here. Um, you want it? You yeah, let, check me, it out? let me let me cop that. I got you. Um, but I, I like it. I like it. Um, yeah. You know, I was like, this is different from Logic, and I appreciate it that he – did something different mm-hmm. because I feel like a lot of times, and we've mentioned this before um, when we talked about Taylor Swift, I was like, I need Taylor Swift to do something different. Um, and I feel like this was oh. logic doing something different. Oh, yeah. And that's something that I appreciate because he's, he was like on the cusp of getting stuck in that suicide guy. Um, just like mantra. And I feel like with this album, especially coming out when it did, that helped him move away from that. Yeah. Where he is becoming more than just a rapper. He is like an artist. Yeah. And also he wrote a book, so he's an author. Yeah. And I'm sure he's like he on the- He has a movie with J.J. Abrams coming out that he wrote. See, doing stuff. We just I need artists to do things. He's a polymath, man. Yeah. And I'm really, really glad that he is doing, like starting to do actively do things. Yeah, me too. My number 48 is 
from Michigan with Love by Quincy. So, uh, respect uh, to this album title. Shout out Michigan. That's where I was born. Good stuff. Um, yeah, D Town. Um, this is a like a really cool album because it's Quincy's sound is so interesting. He's another member of the visionary music group management team that logic so good segue um and john bellion and a couple of other artists are also on mm-hmm. lawrence uh, chelsea cutler and jeremy zucker who we talked about earlier as well yeah. um it's a cool album there's some super strong songs on it john bellion uh wrote a song on it that was really good it flowed really well because it all i felt like stayed super consistent and stayed in, in a good canon um it's it has songs that I would pick out and listen to again, and then it, it, it's an album that I would sit down and listen to as an album. Um, personally, I just don't think it's super duper my sound, which is maybe why I put it like lower than I think some others would put it at. But for being the type of sound that it is, it executes it extremely well. Um, but it's not necessarily for me. I haven't revisited it too many times. I revisit a lot of his singles and his other work he's put out since then. Mm-hmm. Um, but which is why I think that his next project he's going to do is going to be really good. Uh, the marketing also for this, I will say, was super solid. Like the cover art was fire. It was also in canon from his last project's cover art. All of the different little pictures that he took for it, so good. So that's another reason why I put it um, at least about 50 was just because he hit it on all levels of like con- concept, marketing, and everything else. Um, but it's not necessarily something that I was like – man this this top 10 for me Mm -hmm. i really liked it too um i think see i think he is more my sound oh yeah he's totally your sound so as a person i feel like if i had the same like a list he would be it would be higher i agree i don't know how high it would be because i also am a rap guy and this is not a rap album Mm -hmm. um but i also really enjoy like i don't know I, i don't do you know who does his production does he do his own production I think, I think he does some of it. I think he does some of it, and he brings in people like Belly and other friends of his production. His production was fire. It was like every song, like minor, like vocals are great, of course. But like, even if you took the vocals out, like the 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 musicality mm-hmm. of it was really I good. I agree. And knowing that Belly and probably worked on a fair amount of them mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. It does because there's a lot of that like boom bap type deal, which is so stereoty- not stereotypical so sign- signature of those people and that group of artists minus logic that is fair because jeremy zucker is kind of that way too uh to an extent um i don't know yeah i, I liked it it was, it was yeah. good it's a it's a it's a good project i think everyone should mm-hmm. listen to and especially he's like he's emerging but he's not like no one knows who he is yeah because when he his set got canceled at hangout everyone was like there's tons of people that were gonna go Oh and yeah, everyone freaked out. Yeah, but Yo. he's coming and playing this year, so hopefully he won't cancel. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Yo, he's huge in Europe. Fingers crossed. Yeah, Yo, like, all those visionary artists are huge yeah. in Europe like, or like I'm, Asia. Every it's time weird. I watch him, like on on Insta, like he'll post like pictures of shows from like Germany, and it's like lit, sold like, out crowd. It's lit, lit. Like those yeah. people are getting like crazy. <laughs> it's it's insane. Over there, man. Yeah. yeah, wild stuff, man. Ryan, what you got? All right, so my number 47 is Fever by Megan Thee Stallion. Oh, boy. <laughs> you did not. <laughs> I'm was, uh, so mad. That was, uh, that was something. I am explicitly frustrated right now. You're um, welcome. So I think everybody needs to listen to this album. Megan Thee Stallion, to me, was my other rookie of the year. Um, yes. So if I had to pick two rookies of the year for this year in like mainstream hip hop, it'd be Megan the stallion and a baby agreed because I don't think anyone had a more positive year than those two. Agreed. Um, you've already touched on the baby, but Megan can rap. And here's the thing. People need to stop talking like Megan can't rap. Megan raps the shit out of this entire album. And I think she does that because everything is suited perfectly to her voice. There is not a beat on here where I'm like, oh, I can see somebody else made this with some, mm, like, mm-hmm. I can see a producer making that beat for somebody else and it not working at all. But every beat on here is so distinctly her that just kind of has that bounce that she brings. Like, you heard it with her singles, like, Big Old Freak, which isn't on this album. Um, the single from this album, Cash It with DaBaby. 
like that just has a certain like bounce to it. Like you don't really know if you're ready to like fight somebody or like ready to go and like slide in them DMs. Like you just have to do something. Um, and the fact that she's in college and like succeeding That's and wild. putting out an album like this is amazing. Very takey. <laughs> um, I really feel like she has a super bright future. Um, she's been posting more freestyles on Twitter, um, Instagram recently, which have also been incredible. Um, so I really, really feel like she, to me, she was probably my number one from this freshman class with her and a baby. Um, and Over I, YBN? Yes, I think so. I hot, think so. Hot take. No, I'm kidding. Hot take. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm no, kidding. No, it's a hot take to me. I really <laughs> think so. I'm kidding. I really think so. Um, I think as freestyles go, you're absolutely correct though. I think, I, I think just for me, like a lot of rap for me is voice. Like if I can't, like if you rap and I can't hear it in your voice, like uh, you yeah. should be rapping. You're right. Then it's not like there's, I, that's why G easy is not for me. Cause mm, I don't like his voice. G easy. Uh, I like G easy's voice. Though. I like, cause he has a certain cadence that right. he can only like only G easy can but do the G easy. Like cadence. certain rappers. I think exactly. Their voices. Like there's rappers that are super popular. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about them because I don't need that hate right now. <laughs> Oh, that I, know who I we dislike about. <laughs> solely because of their voice. And right, I'm like, right. they can rap. The wordplay is there. Everything is great. Just but the Megan for you. Yeah. Has, has a voice that I really enjoy. The yeah. baby has a voice that I really enjoy. I, I love YB and Cordae voice. has a voice that I enjoy. But I like. I feel like Megan and the baby's voices fit better with rap to me in my head. However, and we'll touch on Lost Boy much, much later. Yeah. Um, Lost Boy is great. But with Megan The Stallion, I feel like she was my other rookie of the year uh, just with how hard she came. And she just didn't let anybody get in her way. And I deeply, deeply appreciated that. Someone tweeted, I, I forget what celebrity, maybe it was Harry Styles, I forget. But someone said, um, I don't think we're going to have an issue, but we must protect Megan The Stallion at all costs. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's a fact. Absolutely. It's, it's a fact. Um, number 47 for me is Midnight by Set It Off. So in the canon of set it off albums was not my favorite in the, but because it is set it off, it still is a good album. I just didn't vibe with this album. I think that's because I went in with too high of expectations and I, I messed that up for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, because one, we waited for ever for this album because they put out killing the mirror like a year before it and you kept thinking, Oh, we're going to drop, we're going to drop, we're going to drop. It just didn't drop. And then it finally came and I was like, I kind of got worn out by it by that point. But the cover art is fire. The marketing was dope because they redid the hand symbol, which is super cool. All like the coloring of it was amazing. I just, I just felt like a lot of the songs sounded so similar that I uh -huh. couldn't differentiate between some of them. Was my issue versus like upside down? Every single song is completely different sounding. But Duality is still my favorite album of theirs. I don't think that's going to oh, ever change. Oh, Duality's the GOAT album. Du Duality's the GOAT. That's just because of its nostalgia factor. Um, but I didn't like this as much as Upside Down. Um, but I also think, too, that they have also gone in a lot of different directions in the past few years. I mean, they started out like with five people. Then Upside Down was four people. Then Midnight was four people. But then they just lost another one. So now they're a three-piece. And they just put out a new single as a, a three-piece. The first piece of music they put out since going down to three people. They go into a lot of stuff, and they also tour a lot. So to be able to put this out and it be good and not trash yeah. is impressive. It's just because I love Set It Off, and they read and deliver for me as much. I think that's why this is lower. If it if I, it didn't have the nostalgia and love for Set It Off, I think it would be higher. But because of my own expectation, mm -hmm. I'm putting them down. All right, we'll talk about that later. I know you will. I know you will. You will. Oh, we'll... Dude, that's a long album, too. In it today's is. music. Oh, oh what yeah. 15 songs, 15 51 tracks. minutes. Like, that's pretty long. Anything that's 45 minutes and over is, like, long form now. Yeah, LP. <laughs> like, quote-unquote long form. LP. Yes. But we'll, we'll definitely touch on that later because I have I yeah, have thoughts yeah. about I'm, this album. I'm sure that you do because you and gave me a face. Yeah. This I, is the first I one I, that where you've been on that side of the table and you've yeah. been like, I disagree. I, I disagree with you. I've like disagreed with you like three or four times. This is the first one. You're like, mm, this is this is it's a little too low for you, yeah, Colton. I don't one, know how I feel about really that. High for me, that <laughs> one was I. I was really high on that album. I got you, but there's like six that we've done that I'm like, this is gonna rock him when I tell him what <laughs> that album is for me. No, but I I really I really have an idea of why I think the album was different and like why I I feel like 
right, we'll get there. I, I'm, I feel there. like I'm we'll already respecting this opinion. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, we'll get there. Okay, let's get it. So my number 46 is Olympus. I don't know why I just went into triplet. Is Wait, Olympus by John Keith. Is that yes. for you? This is an album that I thought was fantastic, but I thought there were things that were better. And I thought there were 45 albums that came out this year that were better than Olympus. How I didn't. Yeah. yeah. So I thought this album was great. Adam's gonna shoot. Me <laughs> I, was, I was like, I'm I was up. like, I'm not even gonna talk I'm on this one. I'm, I'm, I'm done talking. Y'all got it. <laughs> so I really love this album. I really love the concept of this album. Um, I really love the fact that he is so young and putting out content that is this quality, just on a basic hip hop level. Like this is great. Um, bag with no big deal. I feel like those two, like those two together, are oh, just amazing. Um, and Adam, I'll. Let's give way for your opinions because I know you got thoughts. <laughs> All right. um, you can only give us half of them because we're going to get this to it again. Okay. But, cool. however, let me say two more things. I sent this album to my dad um, because – Roger Key. Mr. Roger Key. Uh, shout shout out. out to Pops. Um, it's funny because I never call him Pops ever. <laughs> <laughs> and so he loved this album. I will say my favorite song after listening to this about five, six times is Saul – with Gavin the Hot Rod, um, for a while it was a, a lot. A, for a while it was Bag, just because I loved I loved the combination of him and No Big Deal, and also Bag like got me through like one of the worst days of my entire life this year. Um, but yeah, Adam. All right, take so, the wheel. Tear me to shreds. I know. Be I, nice. I'm not. No, like I, I'm not hating. I just want to talk talk about the album because I, right. I don't care where it ranks really. Um, and if I were ranking it in my personal list, it would be top 10 for sure. I don't know yeah. where it would go. Um, but the thing about John Keith is not only is he young and a relatively new artist in the space. Um, I think he, he comes at the, he comes to this album, like he, he has, uh, two or three projects out, some singles here and there, um, that are all great. But then in this album, he's reflecting back on those projects and thinking forward all at the same time, and it's super vulnerable. Like uh, it, it's 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 so refreshing um, to see an artist that is 22 years old and is already super vulnerable, super transparent with his fans, super um, just willing to allow himself to be the content. Um, and a couple of songs that stick out um, for me are, lyrically speaking, um, I really like Paradise 2. Um, because as a Christian, um, there's always this, this level of um, uncertainty that you have with salvation because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And as a Christian, you have to become okay with that fact. Like you have to become okay with the fact that somebody was born to die for you, which is wild. Like that's yeah. insane. But then the way he says it is, um, someone he's, he's, he's talking about a conversation that he's having with, I think his sister is who he says it is. Um, but he's saying like, I feel like I, I really shouldn't be here. I feel like God should have killed me. And then he goes on and he says like, you can't mess with Ephesians talking about Bible verses and stuff like that. He's like, I watched God kill his son for things that I did with pleasure, which is that when I heard that bar the first time, it shattered me. Like I was, I was like, Holy shit. Like that's mm. crazy. And then his, his sister's like, Oh, how's that? How? She's like, how does that make you feel? She's like, it makes me feel warm and happy. He says, it makes me feel like it should have never happened. Like, like why did somebody have to be born to die for me? Because I'm a dumbass. Like, yeah. Why is it that? So that that to me summarizes his whole persona right now. And I think he is in such a good position because Olympus came out and he's already gotten super vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so now, like, he's moving into a space. Like, he's got a single coming out in January called Way Up. It's gonna be fire. I oh, absolutely. Know. I absolutely. Know. But then another piece of this album is the song David, which, bruh. First time I heard David and he said lions, tigers, bears, homie, that sound like a snack. I said, bro, <laughs> eating out here. Okay, so John Keith can rap, rap. First of all, this is true. He he 
is so vulnerable, so honest, such a good like emotional writer. Because I felt a ton of emotional impact yeah, yeah. through this album, through like to his message, um, like about like this conflict he had with his brother, which he's also very open about. Like it's all just so crazy. But then he comes and he brings Derek Minor, who is just the impact rapper of CHH. <laughs> that man said, "Black bald man, pull up to your show in Balmain." Like <laughs> what? Anyway, and then Joy Vantes, who I'm gonna talk about later. Joy yeah. Vantes comes into this, and he just brings this like auto tune kind of like young thuggy type feel to the song, and it just really wraps it up nice. I don't know. I just Olympus is it's top notch, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna table my thoughts because I know Colton was the future involved. of. Yeah. I think the future of hip hop in beyond CHH because I feel like these guys are about to move beyond. Like kind of not necessarily move beyond that label in like content wise, but move beyond that label in just pure reach. Remind me to talk about labels later. Um, they, I feel like he is poised to make probably some of the biggest impact that guys that have come before him haven't been able to, and I'm really really excited for what he's gonna do. He's also a really nice guy in person. Turn um, up! Shout out to meeting to meeting artists, man. Yeah, small artists. Yeah, Let's shake for hands. Sure. Watch! I watched this man pull up to the side of a show. Say shake hands with the plug to get a pair of Yeezys straight out the <laughs> car, and then he's wearing them with the StockX tag still on at this show, <laughs> and they look like they're about three sizes too big. <laughs> but still, he got drip. It don't matter anyway. Yes, oh, for I, sure, yeah, we yeah, gonna, drip. We're gonna move right. on. We we, right. we gonna visit it. Again. What's next? Number forty six for me is Para Me by Cucko. So Cucko is a like Chitano uh, singer from L A, which means like. Yeah, like Latin American. He's Mexican heritage. Um, I found him because he was a featured artist on the last Polyphia project that came out. He was. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes he was. Yes, he was. He was on that. And then he was also on that like little booty call album I talked about way back. He was featured artist on that and he spit. Jesus <laughs> said, run that back. <laughs> Jesus said, run that back. Um, but so part of me is awesome. It's like this trippy, cultural hallucinogenic album like the singles from it were so good and i just turned i play it and i think the first time i heard it i like repeated it three times in a row because just that good my only beef with this i don't love the cover art because i just the way he they painted his face it's just it looks gross to me the rest of it's great just didn't love the cover art um and i don't th- i don't love the first track which is like just the intro because it's just like really really loud but after that, <laughs> it's so loud. It's so like you put you put on like at work and everyone's like, "What's that?" Because it just goes warning, warning, and like in a really loud, distorted voice. And everyone's like, "Oh shoot, is that the fire alarm?" I'm like, "No, that's my Spotify." But uh, the rest of it, the rest of it, <laughs> the rest of it is great. And I, I, he's like 20, and he's like really young and talented. I'm um, really looking forward to more music from him. Um, and just shout out for just being Latina because. Yeah. We don't have a lot of those those I think artists outside of their own Latino community that are like still kind of small like except for the the Bad Bunny the the J Balvin and that kind of stuff he's on like a, a kind of different like niche of that level he doesn't yeah. do trap and stuff like that yeah so shout out to him for repping his his like sound and culture simultaneously all right so are we all good we do, good do we all need do, no, we, we good. good we good we, we straight right? we, we good we, we half we about halfway there we, we got halfway, this we halfway through y'all we're making it yeah all right so my number 45 is two chains rapper go to the league two two chains all right formerly known as titty boy i forgot um, <laughs> i you know forgot. you know <laughs> so, so i love to i've loved two chains for ever um, I've always loved his voice and his cadence and how he never tried to rap not like himself. Mm-hmm. Even if you go back and listen to his old verses as Titty Boy, it's always distinctly 2 Chains. And I thought this album was distinctly 2 Chains, and that is exactly what I needed from it. Um, this album, super deep, did not expect the way for no. it to start the way it did. And then the end the way it oh, did, too, yeah. with Sam. And it's all a metaphor for Uncle Sam? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Wasn't ready. Um, so I like I kinda like Woke Two Chains because I, he's I, I love Woke Two Chains. Because he's woke ish in the fact that he is two chains where he's like, I'm smart. Like I was top of mm-hmm. my class. Like I I am a genius. Yeah. But also I can rap. Yeah, he's not like Kendrick Lamar where it's gonna be the whole thing is like yeah. this su- subconscious political thing. He balances those two sounds extremely yeah. well as a result. Speaking of Kendrick, 
best song on this album oh, by oh. far is Mama I Hit a Lick oh, featuring for Kendrick sure. Lamar. Oh, yeah. And when I remember the first time I listened to this, I was like, all right, cool. Like him and Kendrick, like expecting this, like not necess- I was expecting a conversational thing, like kind of like we got, but I did not expect the falsetto thing to happen because we've seen other artists future do that and it not oh, work no. at all. Oh no. And they did it and it worked. And I was like, run it. Like this, this album was awesome. It's really um, good. And it, it kind of brought me back to like old, like not necessarily old two chains, but it kind of brought me back to based on a true story, two chains a little bit, which of course gave us no lie feature in Drake, which is honestly Drake's bass song, Drake's best song. Um, Ooh. That's a, that that is that is a hot take. Yo, we're not here for Drake, and um, <laughs> Yo. I'm Ooh, not. Man, Fight me. About to get so, offended like uh, every hate. listener. No, I'm kidding. I like Two Chains a lot because I really respect his ability to slant rhyme, and nobody gives a shit. That is, <laughs> yeah, this, is like, true. that is this is true. true. <laughs> this man, speaking of Mama Hit a Lick, this man said money taller than a giraffe. <laughs> like you, don't, you can't pull off money taller than a giraffe unless you are two chains. This is true. Like nobody else would say that. Like if exactly. Drake tried to say money taller than a giraffe, everyone be like, be like "Yo, on get Twitter. your Canadian ass <laughs> out of my rap scene." Nobody wants that. You're not wrong. Money taller than a giraffe. But also, I love how like you talked about Kendrick. I love the many voices of Kendrick. Yes. Oh, and, and I think this is he one that, a different voice. That's table. what I said. Like, I think this it is one that me. has not been seen and it's like this, like super low, like really yeah. low cadence. Da, da, da. Yeah. Like it's, it's, I don't know. I really like it. And I like how, um, his, his lyrics of it too, were basically like, uh, uh, up until this point, Kendrick's been super woke, like yeah. straight up, but then he's flexing. Yes. Song. Yeah. He's like G5's all in my backyard, like straight up. Like I'm not, I'm not here to play anymore. I'm here to flex. And yeah. I, I want a Pulitzer. Really well. I'm gonna flex, dude. <laughs> honestly, he deserves it. Agreed. Um, yeah. I, I really, really like. I really, really like this project. Um, and even like if you, even if you go back through the names of some of these songs, it starts off with Forgiven, then you get Threat to Society, Money in the Way, Statute of Limitations, which if you're paying attention to anything happening in the world right now, you need to know what Statute of Limitations are. Then you go down to Whip, NCAA, Mama Hit a Lick, Rule the World, Girl's Best Friend. Ooh. Now, Ooh. That, that was so, a good single. We get, we, I, I skipped over this because I thought this was one of the most interesting album order choices of all time. To have a song featuring Kendrick Lamar, who is probably the closest to the pure embodiment of hip-hop that we will get for a minute. Yes. Into a song featuring Ariana Grande. Yes. Who has caused controversy in her own right. And I thought that was super smart to put those back-to-back because you come off Mama Hit a Lick on such a high that when you get into that song, you're already like rolling and into it. And then you're like, oh, hmm, wait, that's... That's, that's the teamwork on this album to yeah. me is like a, a minimum four. But I think I put it as like a four point five out of five, just because the interestingness of the chosen features as well as what they brought to the table. Yeah. Unrelated side note: Did you know that Pharrell Williams produced "Mama I Hit a Lick"? You know, I did not know did that. I didn't know that, but that's why if I like you it so listened, much. I can hear genius. it. I can hear that. That's wild. I did not even I didn't know that realize. That's, that's wild. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I can hear it though, because like that kind of the but but that right no, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that yeah. that sound yeah. that's that, I can see Pharrell just being there like, hey, do it this, and Kendrick being like, no. <laughs> Pharrell's like, hey, listen, my name is Pharrell Williams, and you will do what I say, and then. This happened. Yeah, it's a good stuff, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about this Ooh. again, even though we talk about a lot here. It's just a really interesting album. Um, my number forty five is debatable on whether or not it is an album because it was technically a playlist. Uh, is Summer nineteen by Reach Records and various artists. Gang, gang. Um, so yeah, like I said, featuring various artists. I mean, because some of them are not on Reach yeah, Records. Yeah, you're you not know? wrong. Um, but it's technically a playlist because they distributed. it as a playlist of the 116 like reach records yeah um profile on streaming services it wasn't like you could click this album thing and if you were an artist on this album you'd have to go to their page and you can click the individualized songs they put on it and yeah it'd be like their song or appears on but it wouldn't pull you to this whole album page yeah. um so i just like say that on my spotify like as a playlist mm. but right is great. Like there, there's, there's some bops. Both 
RG songs are my favorite songs on it. Um, too much personally being my favorite song off the whole album. So good, yeah. so good. I listen. So I good. will listen to that song on repeat just because I like it so much. Um, Gloria, Gloria is like th- that was the first song Gloria, I heard from this, man, yeah. and I was like, all right, because we have what up RG and Gavi, and if you know me, get them. <laughs> Get him. Yeah. The, if you know me, I yeah. love Gavi. Yeah. And he didn't put out this year a project, and I needed this to kind of like hold me over. Um, he's been producing a lot. Though. But yeah, yeah he's he, he been producing a lot because that's what and he is. He's he did a let us know artist. that it is on the way. Like, I, we have right, the title. right. I so summer nineteen was it was really cool. I, it is cool. I think it, it shows like I think if if we talk about like Christian hip hop as a whole. 2019 is going to remember be remembered as the year that it all came together. I agree. I, I completely absolutely agree with that. I absolutely up to, agree. Up I agree. To this point, up to this point, you've had these little separate factions all over the place. Because mm-hmm. you had Reach, and then you had RMG, mm-hmm. and then you had independent artists, and you had... Um, who else? Uh, like, some random crews in Texas, and, like, some people doing stuff. And so, like... This represents, and and I really think this is the place that because Lecrae at this point, like I like Lecrae as an artist, but I think of him more as an executive and, a, and a culture figure at this yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, I think this is him leaving his destiny and saying like, okay, my my last thing that I want to do for the for the scene and for the for the art, like for the art and for like the faith, is I want to bring everybody together mm-hmm. because, like. When Lecrae was coming up, he was able to see what it was like when everybody was doing stuff together because nobody was really signed then. It was all a bunch of independent artists just doing their thing. Yeah. And so now we're coming back to that. And if you look at the track list of this of this playlist or album or whatever, um, there's a ton of independent artists still. Um, and most notably, you got my boy, Aha Gazelle, coming in on Times 10 with 1K Few. And it's Aha. Bars. I'm going to talk about 1K later when, when, when he comes up. But, but Aha... Cool. It brings brings this unparalleled level of swag to Christian hip hop. Like, this is true. Like nobody does what he does, and it's so cool to see him be present in the summer nineteen playlist, especially after the supposed drama with him and Reach Records over the past two years, because he signed a deal and then he said he wasn't signing the deal and he didn't, um, and there was a lot of whatever. But my favorite track on this album is Energy by No Big Deal and Tori Deshaun. That's a good one. Because a good one. we're going to talk about Dilly later. But Tori Deshaun can rap rap. Yes. That man, like, when I heard his verse and he said, like, uh, pants are sagging because all of my people burdens in my pockets, you hear me? Bruh. I was <laughs> like, holy cow, this is a different... Type That's of, a bar. This is a different is a type bar. of, and then but try bar. to talk down on me, and I'm gonna shrug my shoulder out of socket. Like he's he's bringing this like wokeness, but this don't mess with me wokeness. Uh-huh. And he's saying like, here I am. I'm taking this space. Like he's a super young artist as well. He doesn't even have. Um, he didn't come out with a full project this year. He he did have a project last year called Boopy. You should definitely go check it out. It's really cool. Um, but he's coming into the space and saying like, yo, I'm not to be messed with. I'm mm-hmm. here to stay. Um, that and this, I think this album shows the prevalence of What Up RG, because oh yeah, like oh, for sure. we gonna, oh, I mean yeah. we gonna talk about him in depth later, yeah, but sure. I think he is like the the person to watch in 2020. Like I think especially for CHH, but just for me, it, well, I, I whole, think yeah. RG has state like seeing him live and meeting him and like all that kind of stuff. He's really not only a really cool artist and with a really cool story and like very vulnerable person, but he's also really approachable. And yeah. Really nice. Extremely um, approachable. And so I think that is a really cool combination to see. Um, shout out my boy, Akleso appearing on this album. I ain't gonna get to talk about him anywhere else. Cause he hadn't put out music in like three years. Um, <laughs> but Akleso, drop Woody. Akleso, if you're listening to this, Drop Wody. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so one last thing before we move on. I remember when we went to see RG's first like headlining show that he sold out at Aisle 5 in Atlanta. Um, they took a picture because at the end of the show, it just be, kind of became an RG and Friends extravaganza. Bro. Which it was, was, so, it was so cool. Which was great because he just so brought cool. out No Big Deal. Juan Day also had a great year. Mm. Um, Lecrae, Aha, like all these guys came out. And I remember they took a picture and I remember, I think it was no big deal that posted and said, look at all of this unity that has happened. Yeah, that I would not culture. have ever thought 
was going to happen like a year ago. If you had asked me like, oh, do you think these people would ever collaborate? I would have been like, no, um, not at all. I feel like there was just too much division and too much elitism in CHH for people to like kind of get over it and just be like, we're here for the music. Which we could talk about Christianity as a whole overtones with that as well. <laughs> but I the mean, dumb words. I mean, but we go, but I we mean, go on, table that ooh, for a different I, podcast. We will come back to that <laughs> at a different time. Yes. Um. Wow, that was that was a that was a bag of tricks on that one. I love that. That was a good one. Primo uh, discussion. All, all right. right, I'm up. Yeah. So I'm gonna bring an album back that we talked to we talked about a couple maybe a couple episodes ago one uh-huh. episode ago I'm not sure but anyway it's called Seven Nights in Chicago oh, by David yeah. Diggs and Rafael Casal. Yeah. Hey, let's go. So that's num- my number forty four. Um, it's probably this short. It's probably this low because it was seven songs it's and short, I wanted yeah. this to be so much longer. Yeah. However. I loved everything about this from Same. just everything about this. Mm-hmm. Okay. So first of all, Easter egg, the guy, Matthew Santos, everyone knows exactly who he is because he sang the hook for superstar by Lupe fiasco. Mm. Okay. Um, Oh yeah. And he can sing, sing. And so I remember when they posted, we were all on Instagram, like posting these videos of them recording, like, just holding microphones in a hotel room. And I was like, all right, this is going to be really cool. And then we heard nothing about it. And I was like, I would every once in a while just kind of be like, hey, remember that time y'all recorded some stuff? I want to hear it. Yeah. And then they would do a show here and there where they would pull out I Want It All or something. And I was like, cool. And I remember like when they finally said, I think it was Rafa who tweeted, he's like, remember that time he recorded an album with our friends in a week in Chicago? And I was like, it's about damn time. And so I remember they put it out and I sat down to listen to it right as I, I was finishing the Umbrella Academy, who um, Emmy Raver is in the Umbrella Academy. If you haven't watched it, shout out to Gerard Way. Great show. Um, oh, that was his show? It was turn a show. Turn yeah. I forgot about that. Um, and I remember it just starts and she and she just comes out singing. And I was like, this is going to make me so like that had me hype. And then they start rapping. And let me tell you, these boys can rap. Like, they really can. These no, boys, no joke. These they, boys they can bars. rap, rap. And beyond that, the fact that they got Chris Lee, who um, I got to see in Hamilton in Chicago, um, just steal a stage. Like to just come in at the end and give us this pretty little like outro to the intro, um, made me really happy. And also, so my favorite moment on this record is when it's uh, David and Rob, and they're about to rap, and you can just hear the restlessness coming from them too. And then just Rafa just launches into this hyper speed verse. And then at the end, it kind of comes back. He goes, I just don't know why we have to keep doing this. We're just so much better. And I'm like, you know, they're not wrong. Yeah, they can like outspit, I'd say, a yeah, good portion of like they really can. rappers. Um, and I really appreciate the fact that they now have the platform to put out music as consistently as they can. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll touch back on David's music a little bit later uh, mm. but i really really appreciate the fact that this is another case where i found rafa through before like blind spotting go watch it um before blind spot i knew rafa as a poet because i found him through my love of watsky who we will also come back to later exactly and i love watching poets i love watching guys that can rap that are also true poets and true wordsmiths and the way they can just kind of maneuver things together that I would never have thought to talk about, yeah. but they can do it so seamlessly and just make it work, work. And that is something that I really appreciate. And also, unlike Colton, I really like the fact that the album cover is black and white. It just says Seven Nights in Chicago. I mean, it fits the concept. Yeah, and I really sure. appreciate, and I feel like if it had something super extravagant where it was like a cityscape of Chicago, all of them yeah. hanging out of windows, like Chicago and Spider Man, like or something like that. I feel like that wouldn't have. I feel like that would have taken away of the rawness of this. Yeah, it is very. And raw. you can this feels super raw, and that is something that I really, really appreciate. So that is my Seven Nights in Chicago review. Number forty four for me is the Search by NF. Um, it's a good album. I just think it's too long. Is why I put it a little bit lower. Interesting take. I I think it's just I it's really long and it's like I talked before with like chances the big day that was also the downfall of that album to me was it was too long. I love my wife. But NF man he can spit like he spit on this album especially the first half with all the singles. Woo, boys got bars. 
And I also thought yeah. that he brought a lot of like of interesting stuff to the table. Like he's a super vulnerable artist, and he's just like he's just like this gray area of like I'm a dark rapper and I sound like Eminem, but I'm not Eminem because I'm also a Christian and I have like a keys thing as my like marketing. He brings a lot of interesting things to the table. Um, this search, it was I don't I actually don't know if there's been any like NF album besides Perception that I've been like, whoa, this album as a whole package is absolutely amazing the search is one i haven't revisited that much because like the last the second act i'm just mm-hmm. like did you listen eh. to mansion i like mansion mansion's good i think i don't think this is better than mansion i like perception the okay. most did you listen to paint my dues the single oh yo, it's yeah fire. yeah, it's yeah. Fire. It's fire. Uh, do you think he, hold on before you but, continue do you think he's releasing another project soon because that end because the end of him drawing that thing looks like he's drawing like it's a very very like this could be a announcement sort of deal. It's possible. Or not. It's possible, but he's touring right now and stuff. Like he busy. I think it's I gonna know. be a minute. Also, like I said, this album like, took him a long time to put out, like because of its length and stuff. So I also I think, think we're. It's be a I think we're about due for a braggy NF album. Maybe an EP or something. Yeah, I feel I think like an EP. I feel we're gonna get like an EP or a mixtape from NF that's yeah. super braggy, like paid my dues was. But here's my question: Is NF a Christian rapper? What is uh, he? Okay, so he opened for Tadashi. <sighs> Explain okay, hold this on, to hold me. On, hold on, hold on. Okay, so NF. I really like his rapping ability. Mm-hmm. However, and this is probably a hot take. I number one, speaking strictly on music, I think that most of NF's music sounds very similar. I agree. Um, he's not not saying he's not good at it because I right. think it's by choice. Right. Because he talks about like how his sound is is super him, which it is. Mm-hmm. Like his like I don't listen to an NF song and I'm like, wait, is this NF? No, I know. <laughs> like the minute I hear the creepy minor piano keys hit, <laughs> like I know that it's an NF yeah. song. And so like he has that going for him. But speaking on like his his faith, I do know that, or I, I say I know because I but I don't know. I don't know anyone's hearts. The only person who knows hearts is Jesus. Um, but, Amen. But um. I my perception of him is that he is a believer, like he is a Christian. Now, he lets it slip into his music every now and again, but I don't think I don't think he wants to be a Christian rapper for a different reason than some people would not want to be. It's not that he doesn't want the label. I don't think he thinks that he's Worthy? Enough, not worthy. I don't. I just don't think he that he thinks that his music is Christian enough to be considered that. I think that's fair. Because, yeah. Because well, because like all of his music, it, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put him in the same camp as Twenty One Pilots, because Twenty One Pilots, I believe, are Christians, and I think that their music is how they they get out their introspection and their like faults. It's not talking about faith necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's talking about his faith. Like, he talks about his faith a lot, but he doesn't talk about faith in action, which is what Christianity is f- not founded around, but what, like, Christian music is, yeah. is, is faith in action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's saying, it, it's it's outward speaking. It's saying, like, here's what, like, the best example I can think of is, like, people who talk about, uh, let the trap say amen. I'm going to reference that. It's a Lecrae album that came out last year. But um, it's, it's Lecrae talking about himself like what faith did for him. But then he's like, here's what faith is going to do for the community. Mm -hmm. Like here's what it's going to do outwardly. Mm -hmm. And so the search and all of NF's albums don't do that. Like they are strictly about himself, which I think there's room in the space for that Yeah. because you like his music might help someone because they might be going through the same things that he went through or is going through. And so I think like, to classify him as a Christian rapper, which, again, we could talk about labels, but to classify him as a Christian rapper would do his music an injustice because it's not necessarily that. Like, mm-hmm. it, I think it's a little different. Save some of your takes because we coming back. Okay. I'm we coming back. Y'all, like, y'all asked me to talk. I'm going to talk. Oh, yeah, I like, I for like, sure. I like oh, I appreciate it. it yeah. just, <laughs> just don't give away everything. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pause. I can talk a little bit more about his, his rapping ability. I'll save that for later. Oh, for All sure. Because right. I'm really interested to see what the rest you have. I might not. Right. I, I might just say the album when we get there and be like, continue. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Moving on. All right. So, my next album, my number forty three, is Homecoming, the live album by Beyonce. Oh yeah. Oh, boy. Which is by far the longest thing I have listened to in so. Long. <laughs> and I remember you, I. You mean not the big day? Oh wait, you didn't listen to that one, did you? 
anyway. <laughs> Shots. So, um, nah, much love. Oh, the wait, it's long. Oh my so gosh. this 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 album is 40, 40 minutes, or forty minutes, forty songs. Uh-huh. It is an hour and forty nine minutes long. Sheesh. And let me tell you, I loved every bit of this hour and forty nine minutes. So this came out. Um, it's her Coachella performance. Uh, and if you didn't watch it, what are you doing? It was incredible. It's absolutely phenomenal. My bad. Um, so they, <laughs> so you should watch it. But I, feel, I really feel like this was Beyonce at her most. Yeah. This was Beyonce flexing. Like this was her. Like I like everybody knows. Like Beyonce gonna Beyonce. Like regardless, she's gonna put on an incredible performance because she is that hard of a worker. But this kind of, and she kind of went through everything that she I could have possibly wanted her to do here. She kind of did it. She even like brought Destiny's Child back, mm-hmm. which I wasn't prepared for. I remember um sitting in um Ansley's apartment at like two in the morning because of the that, Coachella live yeah, stream. Pacific Coast time, yeah, um, same. And I remember I was sitting there, I was like half asleep, and I heard the opening of Say My Name, and I stopped in my place, and I was like, "They're doing this, like for real." Yeah. And like she really did that. Like we did. Like this was. Like this was a hard flex for her, and honestly, I gotta just bow down because it's Beyonce, and this was my favorite Beyonce thing that she's done. And I feel like I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much if I didn't watch it in that moment mm-hmm. when they when it was on the live stream. I really appreciate the fact that she had the HBCU band behind her. Yeah, and I really appreciate the fact that they were like stomping and stepping hard. She also had late twins, the boys. So, um, but. If I had to, like, single out something to listen to from this, I'd say listen to Soldier. It's track number 33, Destiny's Child song. Um, Partition. If you know Partition, then you just know. Um, But also, I love the way, and you need to watch it, but I love the way it starts um, with the drum major and the drummers coming down that aisle, and she's kind of revealed, um, because I'm a sucker for theatrics, and this is a very, very theatric yeah, I mean, Thing. it was one of the best like live performances of like the decade, if not. I the give century. it. I give it the century. Yeah, um, like I give it this century. Uh, I, I feel like it's up there with. To me, this is up there with Prince at the Super Bowl. I it. I was like it was that, like taken, like breathless of why Because I yeah. remember when they put up that sheet behind Prince and he's playing Purple Rain in, in the, the rain, rain and just like ripping that solo out. And that was the first time I'd ever seen Prince. I was like Same. five. Do Same. not hate me. Yeah, and like I remember, I remember listening to that. I remember I got, I was dancing around the apartment, like probably almost getting people noise violations, because I was just that excited about this. Yeah. And so that it just made me feel really good. Um, I'll also say, side note, um, her song "Freedom" will always have a special place in my heart. Oh, I remember just because watching the BET, BET Hip Hop Awards, Awards yeah. and I don't know how they kept this a secret, but she opened that year, and it was her and Kendrick, and they did the dance in the pool. Oh, oh yeah, and they're like kicking yeah, yeah. water so around. Good. And I remember just being there, and I remember sitting in your house, like, is like, so I remember it started very awkwardly. Like yeah. the host was just kind of out there, like, "Welcome to the Hip Hop Awards," uh, and then everything just went out, and then suddenly a wild Beyonce appears, and it was everything that you could have asked for. Um, and I feel like if I had to put this on a list of songs named "Freedom," it would be right behind um, "Freedom" by Pharrell. So, question. How much in that? Well, I don't. I'm not the biggest Beyonce expert. Mm-hmm. How much in this live album is new material, or is there any new material? There is not. Well, okay. What's the most like? What was the most recent project? The um, most limited, the most recent project she put yes, up. Yes. Okay. Before this, she because she did. We yeah. talked earlier about the Lion King, the gift album. Oh, okay. Um, but that came out after this one, this yeah. performance, and one the release of the Netflix film and this live album. Oh, okay. Um, but it. yeah, okay. the most recent stuff she did with this album was from lemonade Mm -hmm. um and or like other features and stuff like that okay okay i was asking my final my one note on this whole album is that to me this is proof because it's a live album and how good and well received it was this is proof that we need a travis scott live album oh boy because it would be top 10 I think so. I think so, too. Yeah. All right. Um, number 43 is going to be American Reject by Taylor Bennett. So I've been mentioning Chance the Rapper a lot this episode. This is Chance the Rapper's brother, Taylor Bennett. Hello, Taylor. Um, so I saw him perform at Hangout, uh, and he announced this pro- project like that weekend at Hangout. Um, 
and it's a like a short little project by him it's super good it is conceptually like about like the american experience in modern america the cover art is amazing um it doesn't it doesn't entirely zoom in super well as much as i thought it would on like the concept of america not not as much as joy badass or like a kendrick lamar is um but it still is a great album because streaming services which was a single for it is a bop he has his his guitarist his name is zeke Mm -hmm. and he performs like on guitar as well as sings a hook at the end of the song and he's yeah. awesome i saw him live and he was great uh, the song with ty dollar sign is super dope chance his brother makes an appearance on this album as well it's a good it's a good solid piece the most interesting song on this entire album though is probably uh what's the name of this one i think it's Maybe it's I Miss You or No One Outside. It's about his friendship with uh, is him as, like, a, like, Democrat. And he has a friend who is, like, his whole family is, like, hardcore, like, MAGA Republicans. Interesting. And he, like, bridges this gap of, like, how, how do I mitigate this friendship? And I feel like no artist has ever talked about that. It's always been, like, yo, if you vote for someone else... I don't, I don't mess with you, man. But like, he's staying friends with like this person, and like, and is, and is like trying to understand their point of view, and they're trying to understand his. That's what we need in yeah, this and country, that's, and that's so relevant. It's so important. For a millennial living in the South. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, bro. Like, like just talk to people. Yeah, like how to address and how to like have conversations with those people, even if you like have radically different views. Yeah, if you have a like, different opinion. Yeah, like because I would, I would them. gesture to say like. But I don't want to get political. Millennials in the South have a different opinion than most of their older people, most of the older people in totally. the region. You're 100. And so, right like, it's super interesting that he would point out that type of thing because yeah. being from from Chicago, that's, that's yeah. so interesting. It's yeah, it's a. I had listened to like that song Obama's a couple hometown. times, and I finally understood it, and I was like, "Holy cow!" How old is he? Do we know? Uh, younger than us. For real? For real? He's, He's like, also uh, openly bisexual. He's open bisexual, but yeah, he's like he has like a kid. Shout out to and the Bi Boys. I think is married, but he's like twenty three, and barely maybe twenty four. Okay, he young. Okay, like he young for like the place he is in life, and also mm-hmm. like the amount of projects that he's put out. Because he wrote uh like his first song that hit really big was "Dancing in the Rain" from his first album "Broad Shoulders" in twenty fifteen. He wrote that song when he was sixteen. Yikes! Ain't that wild? That's crazy. Ain't that wild? Anywho, uh, American Region, I highly, highly recommend because it has bops and also it just it's a great introspective, like semi political album without getting too deep. I love it. Mm. Mm. All right, so my number forty two is Leslie Odom Jr.'s Mister. Talk about it. Uh, so I love this project. It's so good. It's so good. Um, this is Leslie in his bag in his bag just all the way in his bag um i sidebar i think leslie odom jr put out the greatest christmas album of the 21st century oh you right oh you're um, so right you're so right and i will fight anybody <laughs> oh, wait, that I'm disagrees sorry, with me. i disagree that michael buble but then leslie odom jr in this century michael buble for, for me Racist. but leslie odom jr is a bop different Racist. conversation but um <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding so i feel like this Some album Canadian i i remember i was like super super <laughs> <laughs> I was super expecting this to sound like his first um, solo project. Yeah, same. Um, and it is nothing, nothing it's completely like original. His, yeah, and I appreciate that. Like, I loved Autumn Leaves from the first one, but this one, like, I remember I listened to Str- Stronger Magic and was like, "All right, this is good. this is gonna be good." And I remember when Standers started, and we got to that first like chorus thing. I was on a plane and I had to stand up and walk up and down the aisle two times. <laughs> Just because it was that good for me. About fell out. Dude. Yeah. Dude, I almost caught the spirit. <laughs> it's not even a Christian album like that. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> um I I I just really feel like this is if I'm gonna I'm gonna purchase tickets to see him in Atlanta um this coming April because I feel like that's gonna be such a fun time to watch him perform. Um I've gotten to see him speak and he sang a little bit at the end of that, but I haven't gotten to see him perform. And I feel like this album is a very one that lends itself to live performance mm-hmm. because if he gets that was he will, but if he gets that full band up there behind him and he just comes out, I'm sure it'll come out in like 
a suit or something and just really he rock need, that. I, I, I want him to come out with a full band, a suit, and a beat bed. Like, that yeah. would be oh. <laughs> so crazy. Jay, also, uh, Jay Dilla meets Big Band. Can, no. we, can we talk about how he looks so much better with some stubble on his face? I completely yes. agree. That's like, true. In, like, the little like the w- little twist dreads yes. as well. Bit, yeah. Yeah. Like, because I liked his, like, kind of like the clean shaved thing. head. Yeah. But, like, yeah, you're right. I also like how this look in this album separates him almost oh, entirely sure. from Hamilton. Oh, totally. Like, He's not I in feel, that shadow yeah, anymore. Like, I feel like I can show this to somebody and they'll be like, oh, this is really cool. And then they'll like go back they'll be like, oh, wait, yo, he's the dude from Hamilton. And not like, oh, the dude from Hamilton put out an album. He's mm-hmm. like, Leslie Odom Jr. put out an album. Oh, yeah, he's also that dude from Hamilton. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is a really, really cool thing that happened because there's no musical theater on here. These could be musical theater songs. They, they, they could. You could. I could write a whole musical I think on this. the inspiration <laughs> sound-wise is uh, musical theater. You can, you can yeah. hear it, but it doesn't sound like – it's not show tunes. No, he, not he, at all. He, he ain't not out here pulling all. out Les Mis oh, and, sure. and, yeah. and the songbook that all of us used in college. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, this was, this, was, this was a very, very solid effort. It's 13 songs, 40 minutes. Check it out if you need to. Also, a great album to play like around your parents. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, a, oh, it's yeah. an album that you can enjoy oh, with yeah. anyone of any age. Oh, your yeah. grandparents – your great grandparents, your parents, your little cousin, everyone bopping this, and that's kind of hard to do with some of these albums because yeah. you're like, well, I ain't gonna play that for you because they're like, oh yeah, I don't like jazz. They'd be like, well, listen to this, and you will like yeah. jazz. Yeah, yeah. You you walk up into your parents' house for a dinner party and play "Mama, I Hit a Lick." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> unless your parents are with the culture like that, ooh, that could cause some problems. Oh yeah. yeah. But if you yeah, play yeah. this, everybody will like start kind of bobbing their yeah. head. My grandmother asked me, "Who was this? Yeah. Who's singing? Do you have this on a physical copy? I do not. I'm sorry, Nana. Be Shout a great out. album Shout to have on vinyl, though. Copies. Like this. Okay, I think of any album this year on my list this would be the number one that i want on vinyl because it's just that type of sound yeah yeah sure yeah all right we'll talk about more about it later uh number 42 is number six collaborations project by ed sheeran oh yeah that came out this year yeah i know um yeah i kind of like it had a lot of momentum and then it kind of fell out but i feel that's like kind of how i always see ed sheeran but when you go to his shows when you go to his shows, though, you realize like this man is a is a G. He's super talented. Super talented. Super talented. Super strong fan base. Yeah. Super does super well on charts. Does super well just on everything. I thought that this project was gonna be really hard and would not be this high for me because the whole point of it was I'm going to make a bunch of songs that really don't fit together cohesively at all with all these other artists and i'm gonna put them all together on a project so cohesiveness being one of the things i grade on i thought it was gonna tank that but actually flowed pretty well i think that benefited though from the new spotify like stories feature on there Uh uh-huh i was reading the stories of how he got these different artists to collab with him on each of the songs super cool like behind the scenes like i want to know how did you get 50 cent on this song and sharon i want to know these things super cool um the singles going into it, I thought were, re- were really good. The song with Khalid was dope, but my favorite, obviously, we all know my favorite, going to be that Travis collaboration because it's fire. It is really good. And that video it's fire. is incredible. Oh, the video is great, too. All of the videos on this album are really, really good. There was not a song on this album I thought was bad. I just thought that there were songs on here that were great and songs on here that were good. Um but I guess that maybe that's why it's not like higher. Like it, if it was a typical like Ed Sheeran album, it'd probably be my top twenty-five. But because of this, the the concept and the cohesiveness of it, obviously it ain't there yet. But mm. also the fact that let me note one more thing here. I think I'm. I think my favorite song. I lied. It's not a Travis Scott song. It's "Blow" with Chris Stapleton and Bruno Mars. Oh. Because that was so, the collaboration oh. when it was yeah. announced. I was so yeah. interested in it. Yeah. Like three mega superstars in their own genre but their sounds usually do not mesh at all coming together and it was so good and it works it worked so So well well. it was amazing i honestly think that this song should be up for a grammy um and it's not hot take because (laughs) it's just that good Um, was it in the window it is okay okay. it is in the window the grammy window is super weird Yeah, yeah it is in the window 
and they I know they're changing the window as well this year. Are they really? Yeah, they it, this year it's it was eleven months. Next year's is gonna be thirteen months because they're they're changing how the October, September, August all together. That's good. Um, but yeah, it's fire. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's a really interesting project from Ed Sheeran. Man, man, man's talented. He is. That's a fact. For sure. And all right. If you don't believe that, then then you're wrong. <laughs> Hot take. All right, so my number 41 is by Big Crit, the other country cousin oh, on my list. Boy. It's called Crit is Here. I love this album. I So does the mayor of Birmingham. Yo, shout out Mayor Woodfin. Shout out Mayor Woodfin. Shout out Mayor Woodfin. My boy. Gee. He's awesome. Side note, I remember being at the uh, Classic Weekend for the Magic City Classic and being at the art museum working and watching him just break out into outcast. Just like out in the corner by himself, just not care in the world. He gets through this whole verse. Big boy's verse ends. Andre starts. He like kind of stops, looks around to make sure nobody's really watching, and just gets full rapper mode. And I was like, I see you, Mayor. Anyway, so this project, first of all, he got J. Cole on here. So automatically elevated. He snatched him up before he ain't doing no more features. Snatched him up. Um, so Top 20 Crit features. can rap. Crit can rap. You really can. Big Crit can rap. I'm going to say it one more time for the people who don't understand. Big Crit can, can rap. rap. So, as long as we got that out the way, this this project, um, as I'm not super familiar with like the rest of his history, enter, entering this project was, I feel like, is a very great reintroduction or introduction to him and himself because it felt very Southern and it was like super Southern hip hop without getting into crunk or like kind of like getting into like these things that are very city specific oh, like that louisiana bounce type of issue. Yeah. yeah it kind of, it felt like big crit like it was kind of his spot and like his back like we have yellow wolf who does his kind of brand of southern hip-hop and then we have this brand of southern hip-hop which i thought was very very good um i also feel like he has some of my he has my, he put two of my favorite comedians on here and carlos miller and uh chico bean from wild and out in the 85 south show um they are those two old guys that are talking at the very beginning of this album, that's those two. Um, and so that automatically bumped this album up. And so I feel like if you just want an album where you just want to hear somebody rap and just rap their ass off, this is the album for you. Also, he got a song with, with Wheezy F Baby on here. He do. He do. The re, the the resurgence of Lil Wayne. Dude. Is it happening? Dude. I'm I, I don't know. We can talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole episode right yeah, there. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> that is a whole really discussion. Is. Oh, boy. Um, shout out Little Wayne, but that is a whole discussion. Um, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to the opportunity to like hear more crit because I've already been like delving into his past and like some of his old projects. Um, I'm also very, I also really want to see him live. Um, because there's a lot of little wordplay things in here that are very tongue twistery, but very low key tongue twistery. Where if you try to say him as a sentence, it may not come out the best. But if you put it to beat, it would come out beautifully. And I feel like the way he delivers this album is close to perfect. So this big crit, crit was here. All right. Well, number 41 is probably the most controversial album of all year because it is Jesus is King by Kanye West. Here Here we we go. go. Let's talk about it. Man, I, I did not expect to really like this album because I turned it on and I was vibing. I was like, follow God, bop. Um, everything we need with high dollar sign, Straight bop. Up. Fire. God is, bop. Use this gospel, a bop. It's all bops, except for the Chick-fil-A song. It's, it's, it's all bops. It's so good. It's really short, though, just like Yay. Tr- true. And it cuts off really randomly, and true. the transitions are like not good sometimes because they're just going to be like, and the song is going out, yeet, new song. In which he did the same thing on Ye, because it's like him quickly kind of putting a project together. Oh, Scrappy, Yandi, gotta go gotta go do this one right quick. Um, so if he took more time with it, it would be higher up on my list for me. Um, I also thought that Sunday Service Choir was going to be in it a lot more. I thought it was going to be a Sunday Service Choir album completely, and they just on that first song. It might happen. But the, it might happen. It probably is going to happen at some point. Um, but every hour... Like, I straight up sat in my car and listened to this when it came on one day, and I didn't get out till it was over because I had to go through the whole thing just because yeah. it's a bop. But, man, I liked it. And some I know people, they hated it. 
or they loved it. You, you, you know? did not like it. He didn't like it. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a, I have to separate this one, right? Uh huh. Musically, I did not like it. Well, hang on, I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it either. Cause I like, I don't know if I'm a Kanye purist or what, but Dark Twisted Fantasy is by far his. This is I a mean, fact. like, yeah, this is a fact. Work. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. I've, and so, mu- musically though, like, I have to separate because I think. I love being a Christian. I love where he is going with his life journey. Right. Do I think he's perfect? No. No. Am I perfect? No. no. Do I think that he's um what's the what's the how do I put this? He's not done. By no means. Mm-hmm, and I think mm-hmm. should we get a Jesus is King too? Cuz we've I've, I've, we've heard. Have you seen that? The rumor is he's got Dre working on Jesus oh, is King 2 yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah. And is that different from Jesus is Born? I don't know. That's dropping next week? I, wait, supposedly? What? Wait, hold up. Yeah, Jesus is Born. I, pause. <laughs> so, so the, if we get a Jesus is King Part 2 or Jesus is Born, it might be different. But whatever. Yeah. I think his They are next, different. Jesus yeah. is okay, Born is separate. Jesus I think, is Born I is think his, his next project will tell a lot about his transition to wherever he's trying to go. Yeah. Now, the biggest question surrounding Kanye West is, is he really a Christian? Again, I said this before. That's not for us to decide. But Amen. him, I also don't think he's transitioning to be a Christian rapper. He might say that he is, mm-hmm. but I would classify, I would put him in his own, own genre and call him a gospel rapper. And I, I agree. think that it's different because... Him and Chance. <laughs> because... I'm going to go back to what I talked about when I talked about NF, the faith in action. So if, if we were to put it on a scale, visualize with me, if you will, uh-huh. on the far left side is NF mm-hmm. with the introspective talking about his personal faith. On the far right side is gospel rap. And then in the middle is Christian rap. Christian rap is kind of the gateway. And then gospel rap is I'm not talking about nothing about myself. I'm preaching to you. Like uh, I am, I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I'm not doing wordplay. I'm not doing undertones. I'm not putting it in the background. I am preaching to you the word of God through my music. And oh, I think he does it really well here because when he, when he looks at Selah, that man is quoting scripture. He's John eight, three, three won't be in bondage to any man like that. Like he's, he's taking it a whole nother step, but the 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 craziness part the craziest part of that is that it's such a 180 because when it you is. look at pop uh, life of pablo and yay those were pretty much the opposite direction like as far as faith can go yeah. jesus it, it, exactly yeah the, this man went from claiming to be god to claiming god almighty as yeah. his savior yeah and so it's it's just such a 180 and i think I didn't have a hard time with that because that's what Christianity is like. Like, that's what it is. Ooh. Like, like, that's interesting. I'm going to throw some scripture at y'all. Y'all ain't ready for it. But when you look at my boy Paul, also known as Saul in, in the New Testament, Saul was murdering Christians. Like, that was oh. his job. Oh. He was murdering Christians. And he said, I will, I'm persecuting all of them. I want to wipe the face, like wipe the face of the earth clean of Christians because he didn't want them to be around. And then he's on his way to Damascus on his horse. And God said, no. And he knocked him off his horse, said, your name is now Paul. Now go and preach the gospel. And he wrote half the New Testament. So like Christianity is not this, you got to clean up first type deal. He said like, I think Kanye is the huh. modern embodiment of that. Wow. Because you don't see that very often because it happens behind closed doors. And so Kanye already had this huge platform where everyone's looking at him. Everyone, in, I mean, he, and he had a mental breakdown before and everybody wanted to know what's Kanye going to do next? Mm-hmm. Is he going to talk mm-hmm. about slavery being a choice? Is he going to talk about wearing MAGA hats? Is he going to like, what's he going to do next? And it came to this point where, oh wait, hold on. The thing he's doing next is becoming a Christian. Wait a minute. And buying a ranch in that's, Wyoming? Wait, that's not that's not in the playbook. That's not in the in the culture playbook. Nobody does that. Mm-hmm. No one has done this mm-hmm. in modern culture. No mm-hmm. one has said, "Forget my past life. 
I'm going a different way. And that's the definition of repenting right there. Is you say, I'm done with that. I'm moving on. I'm going somewhere else. 180. And I think Kanye did a really good job. So I'm excited to see where Kanye goes as a person a lot. Did y'all see his airplane karaoke he did with James Corden? I did. Fire. It was. It was insane. That was really good. It was good. And so I, I think he has the ability. And honestly, like I think Jesus is King could have waited a little bit longer. I, I agree. I know that's that's a hot take because no, no, it got delayed like three times. No, but I, I think there's a lot of production things. Like I was listening today. I was listening to. Like I said, the transitions were chopped. I was listening to Use This Gospel, which is, is probably my favorite song. Um, and the clips, clips is verse or two verses. If you like, t- I was in my car. I turned my stereo way up to where I could like really hear every piece of it. And like, if you like listen really carefully to the lyrics and to like the the sound and the vocal quality of it, there's like no processing on it whatsoever. <laughs> like it's like super raw, and you and like there's little tinges of background noise. Yeah. Like it's like super raw, which is good because I I mean honestly I don't know if that's what Kanye wanted. Like Kanye could have been like you know what the, my my experience has been raw, so I want this album to be raw, mm-hmm. and maybe that's what he wanted. Mm-hmm. But I th- but that's why I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna say like I think the next project we get is going to be really telling about where he's going. I agree. So I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm off my Kanye soapbox. Y'all can proceed. Well, well you that. said, uh, you said most of what I was going to say anyway, but I did not. I, I think I didn't like this album at all. Uh, well, I didn't like it at all. I, th- but I think I didn't like it from a f- standpoint where I saw he like put out, he's like putting out this like, in the, I didn't make that distinction between gospel rap and Christian rap at the time, um, which doesn't really change my opinion on it. Right. Anyway, but I just felt like when this album came out, there were so many people that were like, oh, yeah, I'm listening to Christian rap now because I listen to Kanye. And I had to, like, just stop myself from, like, screaming at them. There are guys that do this so oh, much I felt better. That. I did feel that. And I mm-hmm. was like, mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, I don't, I'm not a Christian rapper. But I was kind of like, yo, like there are guys out here that have been doing this for years and doing this yeah. at a high level for yeah, years. Like, Shout out R Swift. That uh, <laughs> who, um, that like do it so much better. And like yeah. I'm really happy that Kanye has decided to go down this route of Christianity. Yeah, I'm like, if it's genuine, this is I am all for it. I just felt like it was kind of cheating some of the guys that were like in it already. Sure, and. Maybe and maybe that's just me personally. Um, I don't think I'm ever gonna go back and re-listen to Jesus is King. Um, it happened. I listened to it once. I said okay, and I put it down. Um, I, but that's I, I just to it pretty frequently. That's it's just my short. opinion. And it, there um, are songs I don't like, but I agree. I agree. Um, I, my I feel like if my also I feel like my if my introduction to this hadn't been the Chick Fil A song, oh, I don't yeah, think fair. I think I would have liked it a little bit more. But even then, just like I. I also really wanted this to be about the choir rather than about him. Right. I really – I kind of wanted him to Kirk Franklin this, you know, where, like, he kind of comes in, like, says his piece, but then lets the choir speak because I watched the video today of them doing it at uh, Joel Osteen's church when they did oh, yeah. their oh, Say My Name boy. thing. And I was like – It's so good. Like, they are phenomenal. It's so good. So yeah, if, they, if you haven't seen it, you need to go yeah. watch it. Yeah, I haven't. And, like, we're not going to get into my opinions on Joel Osteen because that will take forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, again, um, we, we commented on the faith earlier. Yeah. I'm going to talk about it in context of the music. <laughs> we ain't talk about that right now. And Check me out later, though. <laughs> I just – I just – I really, I really, really want this. I, I really wanted this to be, like, a, his Kirk Franklin album. Right. Um, And it wasn't, but I'm going I'm to I'm I'm end it right. We're going to put a – Pin in this right quick. Sounds good. The last note I have about this this project, actually, the last note of the entire episode is: Did you see when when Gavi took Use This Gospel and remixed it? Oh yeah. And how fire it was. Oh yeah. Which oh, yeah. told me, Yo, Kanye, you should call Gavi and other fire Christian rappers and producers. Put them on an album with you. One, elevate them into more mainstream because this is a mainstream piece not just in the niche of christianity it shows some respect to the, it shows some yeah. respect to the community and also it would be fire it would, it would, it would be, be really so good, good. If, if he did that with this album or jesus is king too i'd say it'd be like top 10 easily all right all right. Well, all right well 
that's gonna do it then for episode six of what a ride that episode it really was. was a ride it was a ride i pull up and everybody started talking that's what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's the longest one yet um Anywho, thank you all so much for listening, and we will see you guys next time. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms um, and respond to us or DM us if you have thoughts or comments. I'm sure this one has lots of thoughts and comments, because if any episode does besides top 10, it's going to be this one right here. Be nice. Yo, real quick, though. Hold up. I'm, I'm going to tell them people. If y'all have questions about, like, faith or Christianity or Christian music as a whole, you can DM me as well. Um, Adam underscore Stansel on Instagram. Hit me up. Please do. All right. See you guys next time.